Editors note, the opinions in this article are the authors, as published by our content partner, and do not represent the views of MSN or Microsoft. Students from Malawi awarded Chinese government bursaries to study courses such as medicine and chemical engineering say they found themselves in a foreign language nightmare, their grades were vastly inflated, and they were subjected to indoctrination. By Vitus Gregory Gondwe for Amrapungane. Zipporah Vellani hoped that that when she got home to Malawi after studying in China under a highly regarded Chinese government bursary scheme she would immediately begin working as a chemical engineer. Instead, the 23-year-old from Blantyre said she had to start studying from scratch once she got home, as she had learned very little and acquired few engineering skills during her one and a half-year stint at the Taiyuan University of Technology in Shaanxi Province. She also said the Chinese university authorities inflated her marks to make them look better than they were, and that many beneficiaries were children of Malawi's political elite. These complaints were echoed by other graduates of the bursary program who spoke to Amapungane. The main stumbling block, Volani said, was language. We had just one year's preparation for lectures in Chinese, she said. Sadly, all my early preparation was almost useless when I began engineering lessons. Falani arrived in China in September 2014 after earning high grades in the International General Certificate of Secondary Education and a levels through the Cambridge Board Secondary School examinations, which she sat at the private Kamazoo Academy in Kaosunggu. After studying the Chinese language for a year, she said she did well in her HSK Level 4 test, a requirement for foreign students intending to study at a Chinese university. But as the first and only foreign student in the Taiyuan University's Department of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering, Volani struggled from the outset with the language used in lectures. She said she discovered her results were inflated, apparently to make it seem that her studies were progressing well. This became clear when she compared her actual exam marks with the transcript she received recording her year's performance. The International Students Department at the university lowered the pass mark to 30% to accommodate her, but this only left her feeling more disappointed and frustrated. She also felt unhappy about being conscripted into a two-week program of quasi-military training that was a requirement for all students at this Chinese university. She said one of the conditions for the scholarship was that the return air tickets issued by the Chinese government only became usable once foreign students had completed their courses, which can take as long as five years. If students wished to quit before then, the return tickets had to be paid for privately. She tried to leave China after her first semester, but was advised by her family and her Malawian peers to work harder. Finally, after two and a half years in China, she decided to cut short her studies and go home. In her final letter of withdrawal that she wrote to the Malawian Embassy and the China Scholarship Council on 5 June 2017, she said that to become a good engineer for her country, she needed to know what she was learning. Therefore, I would like to withdraw and seek tertiary education elsewhere, she wrote. When she told them she wanted to leave, she says university officials offered to fund her to recruit more students from Malawi and to help her start a business exporting Chinese goods to Malawi as an inducement to stay on. She suspected this was because the university did not want to forfeit the subsidy paid by the government for foreign students. I declined because I was not going to be bribed at the expense of my future. Having decided to go home, she had to find resources to fund her return air ticket. Back in Malawi after two and a half years in China, she started studying chemical engineering from scratch. She is now a second-year student at the Malawi University of Science and Technology. Another student who ditched her bursary and started afresh in Malawi called it a day after studying medicine for two years in China. Josephine, not a real name, was the beneficiary of an arrangement between the Chinese government and Malawi's privately owned Zodiac broadcasting station, ZBS, under which high-performing 
Female students were sent to study in China under a program called the ZBS Best Girl Awards. She said she was selected under this initiative in 2014 after attaining the highest possible score in the 2013 Malawi School Certificate of Examination. Josephine, at that time only 17, said that winning a scholarship to do her tertiary education in China and leaving for the Far East in September 2014 felt like a dream come true. I was so excited I was going to study abroad. Everything to do with my studies in China was well arranged with the help of the ZBS parents and the Chinese embassy, she said. I believed China would bring the best out of me. On arriving in China, she was warmly welcomed by officials at the Malawian Embassy in Beijing and moved to Shandong University, where she was scheduled to study the Chinese language for a year. She sat the language proficiency exam in her second semester and said she performed well. But she discovered that this preparation was woefully inadequate when the China Scholarship Council moved her to the medical school at GMUZ Medical University to begin her studies. She said she would never forget her first day in class. I literally got nothing out of what was being taught, she recalls. I just couldn't understand the lecturer. She had heard from other Malawian students how hard classes were to follow in Chinese, but thought they were exaggerating. I thought they were lazy and not as smart as me, she recalls. Ruefully, the deeper she got into her studies, she said, the more confused and frustrated she became. She began to realize that her one year of language study was designed for basic communication, not for following advanced scientific instruction. She said that together with students from earlier cohorts, she wrote letters to ZBS and the Chinese Scholarship Council in Beijing recounting her experience and asking if she could be transferred to an English medium university, but was merely told to give up the scholarship. She resorted to learning by watching YouTube videos and tried to source English translations of the Chinese textbooks they were using, to no avail. After two years, she returned to Malawi where, like Fulani, she restarted her medical studies from scratch. Now 22, she is in her third year at the University of Malawi's College of Medicine. Josephine said that graduates of the bursary scheme are not trusted to begin working as doctors in Malawi until they undergo a further year's orientation. Wesi Kamanga says she wrote to ZBS complaining about her unpleasant experience in China after traveling to the country in early September 2011 as one of the second batch of ZBS Best Girl Award students. Kamanga stuck it out and graduated after a year of studying Chinese at Shandong and five years studying medicine at Southeast University in Nanjing City. But she said she had faced enormous difficulties, particularly with writing and Chinese characters. She claimed foreign students did not have the necessary orientation and suffered from lack of information and the lecturer's preference for Chinese students. We were not informed when our classes would start and missed lots of lectures in the first year due to lack of information, she said. The lecturer who was supposed to help and advise them told them he was responsible only for Chinese students, while the foreign students' office claimed to be responsible only for foreigners who were learning in English. Classes were a serious challenge. We could not understand most of the stuff because in language school we only learned basic Chinese, as compared to the scientific Chinese that was used in lectures, she said. Lecturers had greeted them with the words, foreign students don't pass my exams. She said the Malawian continued to soldier on, but their enthusiasm eventually began to wane. Most of my classmates resorted to skipping classes and studying on their own from English textbooks. These were not much help as they did not cover the same ground as the ones in Chinese. She said, they tried translating word for word, which was time-consuming. The Malawian grades fell below expectations and soon, failing became the order of the day. She said they tried to seek help from the Malawian Ministry of Education and Chinese embassy officials but received no response. Most of us were psychologically disturbed, especially with Chinese classmates making fun of us and our shattered hopes of a better education in China. Our days were spent in a state of 
emotional and physical weariness, it felt as if our efforts were not paying off, she said. Kamanga said another problem was the lack of clinical experience as medical students at Southeast University were only allowed into hospitals in their final year. She said that as she was about to enter her fourth year she returned to Malawi on holiday and attached herself to Kamazu Central Hospital in Lilongwe. There, she was shocked to realize how much she did not know. She said she could not compare with her third-year counterparts from the College of Medicine at the University of Malawi in terms of either knowledge or clinical experience. Even the little that she knew was in Chinese, so it was hard to understand and communicate with other medical staff. Johanne, not his real name, a master's student, echoed the claim that grades for foreign students were inflated. He said he was very disappointed with his MA degree certificate because he had not studied some of the courses with which he was credited. These included a course in environmental politics which he had never studied, but for which he was given 80% in his final results. In addition, the lecturers did not seem to keep records of students' marks for assignments and exams because the students themselves were asked to provide them. I was self-reporting my own grades to a gentleman who was recording my grades on the transcript and I could easily have lied, he said. Fortunately my results weren't bad. The system is so confused and unprofessional. On one occasion after Johanne delayed submitting an assignment, the system reflected an 80% mark even before the lecturer received it. He said he found this frustrating because he had put his heart and soul into the work and expected to be genuinely rewarded. As a master's student, Johanne said most of his courses were offered in English. However, fellow Malawian taking undergraduate courses in Chinese complained that they understood only 10% of what they were being taught. You have to be a super genius to learn a foreign language within a year and then use it as a language of communication in medicine, he said. He recalled that everyone in his class passed their courses, including colleagues from Kazakhstan, Korea and Thailand who understood no English. It was funny how they managed to do their assignments, he laughed. He said that for one gender studies assignment, a non-English speaker simply downloaded a biography of German Chancellor Angela Merkel from the internet and got 90% for it. As an undergraduate at the University of Malawi, where he had studied before going to China, his average grade was 60%, while his minimum exam result for his master's was 85%. The school was so concerned with making us pass that they ignored our failures. They ignored our real capacities and just rubber-stamped a grade for us, he said. Johanne also alleged there were efforts to indoctrinate foreign students in Chinese political philosophy, which included attempts by academics in the school to portray China as saintly. When students disputed claims that the country was a democracy, the lecturers would fume, he said. There was no academic freedom in the classes, you couldn't speak or write about many things. You had to go for neutral subjects because you didn't want to offend anyone. None of seven scholarship beneficiaries we spoke to were chosen by the Foreign Affairs Department. They and three journalists who have visited China told M. Upon Gain that many bursary students are connected to high-ranking members of Malawi's ruling Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, or the government. They said this reflects the three-pronged system of recruitment for Chinese bursaries, one in which the Foreign Affairs Ministry handpicks candidates, a second in which China reaches agreements with the Malawian government and private institutions, and a third in which candidates are invited in the media to apply to the Chinese embassy online. The ministry appeared to favor politically connected candidates, they said. They also alleged that the students chosen by the Malawian government required less stringent entrance qualifications. One student said he was in a group of about 18 students of whom about eight were related to officials in government and the DPP. A senior journalist in Malawi said when they visited Chinese universities in 2010 they noticed that many Malawian scholars were the children or relatives of ruling party politicians principal secretaries or other senior government officials. 
asked for details of the bursary program. Chinese embassy spokesperson Kui Jian Feng said that since the program was initiated in about 2013, more than 900 Malawian students had studied in China. Feng said the embassy has no follow-up mechanism to assess how graduates fare when they are back in Malawi. When Amapungane raised students' criticisms of the program, including allegations that language was a major barrier, results are inflated, lecturers are biased against foreigners, and the children of senior Malawian politicians and officials are favored for scholarships, he declined to comment. I and other officials from the embassy cannot respond to your questions because we are very busy, he said. There are few staff members at the embassy so everyone is busy all the time, he said. At least four other attempts to obtain comment from the embassy were unsuccessful. Amab Hungain also spoke to a representative of the China Scholarship Council in Malawi who identified herself only as Cecilia. She confirmed that she had received questions via WhatsApp, but was not willing to answer these or telephonic questions. Attempts to solicit comment from the Chinese Ministry of Education in China, based in Damakeng Hutong, Xicheng District, Beijing, were also unsuccessful. The person taking the phone call answered in Chinese and did not appear to speak English. Although the ZBS Best Girl program still operates, it no longer sends students to China. Former bursary recipients said that after Amib Hungain put questions to it about the scholarship program, ZBS called an impromptu get-together with all students whose study it had facilitated in China, attended by China's ambassador to Malawi, Lu Huyang, and the Education Ministry's principal secretary, Justin Saidi. They said that at the meeting, ZBS Managing Director Gospel Kazako made no reference to Amab Hungain's questions but criticized the way Chinese scholarships are awarded in Malawi as dubious and imprudent. He allegedly called on the Chinese and Malawian authorities to do better. The ambassador allegedly responded by insisting there was transparency in the award of scholarships. Approached for comment, Kazako referred Amab Hungain to the coordinator of the Best Girl Award, Owen Lupesca. Lupesca said those selected to pursue studies in China knew what was in store for them, and that girls were told as soon as they agreed to go that they would first have to learn the Chinese language. He said that when some Malawian girls wrote petitions complaining about the language barrier, the ZBS, the Education Ministry and student representatives met officials of the Chinese embassy, who told them it was the policy to teach undergraduates in Chinese. ZBS had to ask parents or guardians to sign forms that they agreed to have their wards take up scholarships, he said. He said the broadcaster did not discontinue the program, but that the Chinese bailed out after 2014 when, at an award ceremony at which she had been asked to officiate, former Malawian President Joyce Banda announced that she would find scholarships in the U.S. for the three best runners-up. This did not go down well with the Chinese embassy. So the following year, 2015, we heard nothing from them, about any scholarships, he said. Malawi's ambassador to China, Charles Numandwe, also refused to comment, referring questions to the Foreign Affairs Ministry, who will ably respond to you. The Foreign Ministry spokesperson, Rejoice Shumba, said the ministry was not aware of the predicament of students studying in China. We will be interested in getting to the root of these issues if they are true, she said. Such information will help us conduct thorough investigations and come up with durable solutions for the betterment of our country. She requested evidence, including the names of universities where Malawian students went through their alleged ordeal. Shamba conceded that relatives of those in government were among those who had benefited from the bursary program. Government always ensures that ministries, departments and state agencies provide qualified candidates that participate in these programs, she said. However, other candidates could apply directly to adverts placed in the media, over which the government had no control. It is also premature to judge the productiveness of students who undertake Chinese scholarships, she argued.
She said the government regularly received compliments from former bursary students who had done well in their careers, and Path Ministry was in constant consultation with the Chinese government to discuss any challenges. DM